Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, overcoming adversities, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the statewide coordinator of the Missing Child Center of Hawaii. She is Amanda Leonard, and today we are going beyond missing children. Hey, Amanda, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, Rusty. So excited to be here. I can't believe I'm on your show finally. I'm such a big fan. Amanda, you have been making such a big positive impact in our community, but before we get into that, can you share a bit about your background? Sure. So I grew up on the windward side of Oahu. Um, I'm a product of the Hawaii public school system. Uh, like so many kids, I was a child of divorced parents. And I had a lot of early exposure to the family court system. And that's when I really found my calling. Um, and I started to dream about what I was going to be at a very, very young age. I started volunteering with state agencies like the Children's Justice Center and um, eventually was offered positions to make me competitive to, for law school. And I was fortunate enough to graduate from the William S. Richardson School of Law and practice family law for about six years. And then in 2018, I made a transition from family law to criminal justice and took the position as the statewide coordinator of Missing Child Center Hawaii and the Miley Amber Alert coordinator for the state. Wow, man, that's impressive. And, and so Amanda, can you tell us about the Missing Child Center of Hawaii? Sure, so the Missing Child Center of Hawaii we were established in the late 90s, um, and we are in the Department of the Attorney General's Office in the Crime Prevention and Justice Assistance Division. And we really primarily serve as the missing children clearinghouse for the state. Our mission is to find missing children, to reduce child exploitation, and to prevent child victimization in our community. So, Amanda, can you share the various ways that children mm -hmm. go missing? Sure. So we handle four different types of cases. The first would be what we call lost, injured, or missing, or limb. Those are children that, um, you know, either abscond from their house or go, or go missing. They're not abducted. We see that they tend to be uh, children with special needs. Uh, so that's one category. Another category is the parental or familial abductions. Those tend to be uh, domestic violence or child abuse situations where one parent takes the children away from the other parent, um, usually uh, during some sort of conflict like a divorce. Uh, the third type is stranger or acquaintance abductions. Those tend to be the most dangerous type of abductions. And that is why we have the Miley Amber Alert program uh, to prevent um, fatalities or, or serious injury. And then finally, the biggest types of case we have is our endangered runaways. And in Hawaii, we see that those kids tend to be more prone to exploitation uh, while they're on runaway status, while they're uh, missing on the streets. So Amanda, I wanna ask you if you can provide like an example of, just a general example mm -hmm. of what are some of the mm -hmm. most common ways ch uh, children get exploited? Well, there's different types of ways. Um, people often hear the term child sex trafficking. Um, that is synonymous with the commercial sexual exploitation of children. And that is when uh, children are exploited uh, sexually in exchange for either money or something of value. It could be drugs, shelter, food, um, different types of, of, of consideration, uh, but they can also be exploited online. Um, sextortion, for instance, is on the rise where that is a form of child sexual exploitation where the, uh, the uh, blackmailer is trying to blackmail children into providing images to them, uh, sexually explicit images, um, and then they use that to uh, extort the child, either for more images or demanding money. So there's def definitely varying ways, and technology uh, is certainly involved in most of those types of cases. 
Amanda, what advice would you give to parents to try to be proactive in preventing child victimization? And what, what's the role that social media plays nowadays? Well, just remember, you know, social media, the internet, children have access to the internet, which is the World Wide Web, which means everybody has access to them. So it's absolutely imperative that parents or caregivers are monitoring their child's online activity, putting parental controls in, uh, on their tablet or their phone uh, to make sure that not anyone has access to their children. Because they're very, th these perpetrators are very savvy. They know how to uh, communicate with kids or pose as other children. So it's absolutely imperative that whoever is responsible for that child is making sure that they are talking to their child about online safety, making sure that they know that they can, they should never meet anyone they meet online in person. Um, even if they think that they are a friend, um, you know, online friends are not real friends in real life. So it's really, really important that that is an ongoing conversation with your kids and that they are taking active measures to monitor uh, their child, uh, use of social media, et cetera. Earlier, you mentioned about the Missing Child Center being a part of the Attorney General's office. And I know that you have big respect for Attorney General Ann Lopez. What are some things that you greatly admire about the work that she does and the relationship that you guys have together? Well, I've been fortunate enough to serve four different attorney generals uh, since uh, 2018. Currently, I serve uh, Attorney General Ann Lopez, who she's an incredible leader. Um, she makes sure that we all feel very supported in our various roles here at the AG's office and is always looking out for our well-being so that we can perform at our highest uh, potential. Um, she has a great responsibility uh, serving as the, the chief law enforcement officer, the chief prosecutor of the state of Hawaii. And it's an absolute pleasure to be in her atmosphere. Um, and we have just a really great team. Um, you know, you talk about that a lot in your books. It's about the team where everybody knows their role, and everybody pulls their weight uh, so that we can best serve the people of Hawaii. And um, we understand the importance of our responsibility. Oh, that's great to hear. And Amanda, earlier you briefly mentioned about the Miley Amber Alert. Can you tell us more about the Miley Amber Alert? Sure. So the Miley Amber Alert is Hawaii's version of the Amber Alert. Every single state in the country has an Amber Alert program. We called ours the Miley Amber Alert in honor of Miley Gilbert, who is one of our victims who was abducted and murdered uh, here in Hawaii. And so it is a joint partnership between our office, Missing Child Center, our four county police departments, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, the Department of Transportation, and the media. And we need all of these people in play to put mass disseminate information on an abducted child, provided that the criteria is met, um, and galvanize the community to respond and help us, help law enforcement to safely locate the child. Yes, and Amanda, I wanna ask you about our super close <laughs> friend, Crime Stoppers Coordinator, Sergeant Chris Kim. I mean, Sergeant Chris exemplifies bravery and courage, and he's making such a big positive impact in our community. Tell, tell me about your relationship with him and how you guys work together to uh, advance the mission of the Mission Missing Child Center. Sergeant Chris Kim, one of my favorite topics. Um, obviously, Sergeant Chris is a highly respected law enforcement officer, the face of HPD, um, a nationally recognized uh, coordinator of Crime Stoppers. He and I met um, pretty early on when I accepted this role because our missions overlap. We are trying to prevent crime uh, in our community. For me, specifically children, Chris is for, of course, uh, for everything. Um, but he's been such a true ally and supporter of Missing Child Center. We work collaboratively. We do joint public service announcements. Um, 
you know, when I came up with this idea to do a, a, a PSA with Chris, he didn't even hesitate. He's like, of course. And, you know, he's just, he's the real deal. His super, uh, his superpower is that he is just a really effective messenger of information. And that gift that he has to resolve crimes, to prevent crimes, to empower the youth, um, it is truly extraordinary. And I absolutely loved when he was on your show and it just, it was made such an impact on me um, and made me respect Sergeant Chris so much more and, and I admire him so much more than I already did. Now, Amanda, I completely agree with everything you said. I mean, I want more Sergeant Chris Kims in the world. And can you tell us about um, what you do to help train people in various organizations? Sure. So one of my responsibilities at Missing Child Center is to train the police uh, and social workers and other professionals that are in this space that we're working with. This is a very large child protection community that we're operating in, and it's part of my uh, duties. It's actually in statute is to uh, ensure that state and federal laws are being followed pertaining to missing children. And in order to do so, I have to make sure that everybody is reminded and aware of what those laws are, how they are applicable on their cases. And I spend a lot of time uh, training. I go to the police academy. I go to all the islands. You know, as a statewide coordinator, I have to make sure that we are uh, assisting all the islands, Maui, Kauai, Big Island. You'll often see me at the airport early in the morning running around with my bags because I'm constantly um, traveling to the neighbor islands. I go to the mainland as well and train. Uh, we are very closely connected with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, which is right out of Washington, D.C., as well as the Justice Department who runs the National Amber Alert Program. So we report to them. We are collaborating with them to make sure that Hawaii is up to par with the best practices to respond to missing and exploited children. Well, Amanda, speaking of the Department of Justice, uh, in 2021, the United States Department of Justice honored you with the National Child Protection Award. And that is just amazing uh, i mean what a that year i mean what kind of impact were did you have in the community during that year i still honestly Rusty, i still can't believe that missing child center received that honor because we don't think that people on the east coast let alone the justice department know what we're doing over here in hawaii and the fact that they acknowledged our work um with our partners and to me it wasn't about me or our office it was a nod from the from the federal government saying you folks are on the right path you folks are stepping up to the plate and doing everything you can to combat child victimization which is getting more and more increasingly concerning nationwide and it was just such a a boost for us, and it was during the pandemic when things were really, really uncertain, and uh, we didn't know kind of what different types of threats were occurring to kids. And it was just a really beautiful moment to have that connection with the federal government, acknowledging us here in Hawaii, two local girls getting a national award. Um, it, 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 it was surreal. But we share that award with our partners. Uh, we made sure to acknowledge that this is a team effort. Um, we were nominated uh, mostly for our work with Operation Shine the Light, which is in partnership with our extraordinary Hawaii uh, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force over here at the AGs, led by uh, Commander Edward Arias. And that is a joint operation to locate missing children uh, in our community primarily missing foster children. And that was something that we came up with um, and the results were pretty incredible um, in terms of the amount of kids that were recovered and the services that were provided to them. So, yeah. 
it was a very, very special moment. And unfortunately, because it was COVID, we didn't get to go to DC and receive the award from um, Attorney General Garland, but he and his staff made uh, videos for us um, to acknowledge that, that moment, which was really special and beautiful. Well, in that picture with you is Kalei Grant, and I featured Kalei on the show, and she's a sex trafficking survivor. What, what do you admire most about Kalei? Because she exemplifies bravery and courage as well. Kalei is, you just said it, she's an incredible leader. She's a survivor. She's a thriver. She has done something truly extraordinary, which is turn that unthinkable pain into action and power. Uh, she served at Missy Child Center for about five years and just did incredible work. I learned so much from Kalei. That kind of wisdom and knowledge you cannot learn in school. She taught me so much about um, that experience. And what's really just so commendable is her ability to sh share that adversity, to share it at that level on your show or you know in your speeches around the country. When you share your personal struggle like that with others, you show other people going through those struggles that they are not alone. And that is the most powerful thing you could do uh, as a public servant. And we, we are just so, uh, so proud of Kale and, and the work that she continues to do to combat human trafficking. Yes, uh, Kale has been making such a big positive impact, uh, not just in our mm -hmm. community, but a, across the nation. And, and um, Amanda, I want to ask you about my books, because you have all three of my books. You have Beyond the Lines, you got Beyond the Game. Um, you and your daughter came to my big Barnes and Noble book signing. Uh, what what kind of experience did you guys have at that Barnes and Noble book signing? Oh my gosh, Rusty, that was the event. That was the who's who. Uh, we walked in, and right when you w entered the door, you could just feel the love and support for you and your literature, and just all of your supporters, your friends, your allies were in the room, and it was it was truly beautiful. You know, I brought my daughter because. I want to expose her to extraordinary people doing extraordinary things like yourself and really show her that you can be anything. I never told you she wants to be an author. And so that was such a um, formative experience for her to see, look, Coach Rusty, as she calls you, he wrote a book. And I put the book in her hand, like this is something he did and he can do shows and he can, he can write and he can coach. He can do all these types of things and she, kids really need to see that stuff. So it was a really remarkable uh, experience. I had so much fun. The line was so long that it was like a Disneyland line. <laughs> but we met all these folks in the line. Um, you know, the Honolulu prosecutor was there, the deputy chief of police. Uh, we got to talk story with everybody and everybody was just sharing and, um, you know, talking about how they know you. And it, it was a really extraordinary, extraordinary event. And we're so proud of you, Rusty. And congratulations on the, the masterpiece that is superior. Thank, thank you so much, Amanda, for being there. I mean, people that were there, I mean, that that's the only way you will know what kind of experience that was because, I mean, there, it was like an army of people there, right? Oh, yeah. I said, I texted you, you don't have a fan base, you have an army. It was like a rock concert. When we walked in, there was you know, Super Bowl champions, you know, Glenn Medeiros, who, like, I idolized since I was a kid. Uh, just truly extraordinary people leaders the energy was just so positive and uh it was really a breath of fresh air for me so thank you so much for inviting us well i wanted to really you know include some of the contributors uh into superior to sign autographs for everybody so it was such a special event and um amanda i want to ask you what are some things that stood out to you mm -hmm. in the books so First of all, Rusty, I just want to say you are such a beautiful writer um, and storyteller. You know, that's not easy. I've, I've read 
leadership books before and they can be very esoteric and not easily understandable but the clarity with which you write uh it, and, and how universal the themes are that is really your super your superpower so i just want to commend you on just your writing abilities um you know i know you don't didn't want to be a lawyer as you wrote about in your first book because you said that we just look nerdy and read all the time but I have to say, Rusty, you can make a very persuasive argument and you would have been a fantastic lawyer. Okay, so your book, the, the interpretation of your thesis to me is it's not what you become, but who you become. And the bottom line is your character, your integrity, and your discipline. And that's not something that happens overnight that comes with practice and building. You have this great quote uh, in your first book, and it's disciplined people keep their promises and commitments. I thought that was just so head, nail on the head. 90% of discipline is just showing up. Absolutely right. And anyone can do that. You just have to have the will to do it. And you can do it tomorrow. You can start freshening up tomorrow. And I just, I really, really love the themes in your book um, about welcoming adversity, befriending adversity. Adversity is a gift. It, it, can, it can lead you into uh, the best directions. And I just was so uh, inspired from the books. And it made me really think about my leadership style other people's leadership style and it's it's so interesting i think most people think that you have to have a leadership position to be a leader and that's not true and in fact there are people in leadership positions that don't that are not great leaders so thank you so much for that contribution uh with your literature um it was really really fascinating and helpful for me oh i love hearing that amanda and and you know, in Superior, I, I talk about the differences between good, great, and superior. And, you know, there's great leaders, but there's superior leaders. And then there's great parents, and there are superior parents. What, do you, what are your thoughts about um, some of the qualities of being a superior parent? Well, that's a great question. I think a superior parent is someone that wants to be a superior parent. It's someone that is capable of putting their children's needs and interests before their own. It is someone that can love their children unconditionally and accept them for who they are. And it's someone that respects their children enough to control their emotions and their thoughts and their actions for the best in the best interest of their children. I think that is what a superior parent is. Everybody is capable. And it's also a parent that gives themselves grace when they mess up and uses that as a teachable moment. Amanda, when I would, we would go through tryouts and then we would have our team together. And once I'd have that team together, I'd share with my team that I am not going to protect you from a challenge. And my guys are looking at me like, what? And I'm like, no, I'm going to teach you how to face it. Mm -hmm. And so much about life is, like I said, you got to welcome adversities because when you deal with it and you get through it, you become stronger for that experience. You become better. You become smarter and tougher. So for me, I, I, I'm going to teach my players and even in executive coaching now, how to face these challenges. What are your thoughts about that? Absolutely. You don't protect kids from adversity. Don't block it. They are going to get their heart broken. They're going to uh, be faced with something, you know, experiences that are very difficult and they need to know uh, how to respond. They need the tools and you can prepare them. This is going to probably happen to you and, and make sure that they feel secured and loved and cherished. If they can feel that from you, they can take on anything. Amanda, tell me about the big 
positive impact that your grandma had on you? Oh, my grandma, Helen, was uh, one of the closest people to, to me. She was the strongest woman. Um, nobody messed with her. She was just a, ahead of her time, one of a kind. She was a very strong woman. She made sure that I knew that I was going to have challenges in my life uh, as a kid, which I already did, and as an adult. And she just left such an impression on me. Um, she always taught me to teach people how to treat me. And that was one of the biggest lessons that, that I learned from her was make sure that you teach people how to treat you and always value yourself. And the last thing that she ever wrote to me was a handwritten letter, um, which I was reminded of from your book that said, we are watching you, Amanda, you are superior. And that's when you told me about your book, I told you that was the last word that my grandma wrote to me. And at the time I thought, what is she talking about? I'm not better than anyone. But what she meant was that she had these standards for me and she wanted me to know that I was living up to the standards and that she was proud of me. And so that, that was a full circle moment from your book, uh, reminding me of my grandma and reminding me to stay on the path and fight the good fight. Well, wow, that's absolutely beautiful to hear. And Amanda, when you reflect back on your life so far, <laughs> what do you feel is the most valuable lesson you've learned? The most valuable lesson I've learned, I think it's to really make sure that you are balancing in everything. Um, you talk about in your book, perfection being a very unrealistic goal. Uh, but when you strive for, perfe for, for perfection, you can uh, catch excellence. I love that. We are human beings. Uh, we mess up. Uh, we do the best we can. But if we can love ourselves and show that love for others, share our experiences and be supportive, uh, I think that is the most important thing that you can do with your life is to have a, a full life with purpose and meaning and making sure that you are uh, doing what you love and also not sacrificing um, what is most important and love and family. Uh, are the most important things in life. Amanda, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up about fulfillment. What gives you the most fulfillment in life? I have to say, I think it's witnessing other people's achievements and success. That makes me truly happy uh, to see people in their moment, uh, like watching you at your book signing and seeing all that love and support. Um, that is definitely something that uh, fulfills me, seeing my children happy, seeing my children learn and achieve things, um, like watching them find their way in the world, um, being a, just a witness to that, it, that is what fulfills me. Amanda, I have to say that you are a superior parent and you are also a superior leader. And I want to thank you for taking time to join me on the show today. Thank you so much, Rusty. We are watching you, and you are superior. Thanks, Amanda. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com, and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Amanda and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis.
We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.